There you go. Okay, I'm recording. Over to you. <laughs> All right, it's um, actually this is a presentation I did for the <coughs> OHGO uh, Netherlands. Uh, um, I don't know, uh, they had some kind of uh, OHGO day, and I wanted to. Um, to show people how QGIS is made and uh, what kind of work is uh, being done for that. Um, it used to be a Dutch presentation and I translated it to English uh, <coughs> half an hour ago really quickly so there might still be some Dutch words in it. Uh, you can tell me if you find them. Um, and actually also I, I, I tried to um, use this presentation to convince people in the Netherlands to start helping uh, on uh, the QGIS project instead of just using QGIS. And I don't think I need that for you since you're already here, but um, maybe you can use this presentation in your own country as well to do the same. Um, so this is my introduction. My name is Raymond and I'm into QGIS for quite a while. Uh, working as a freelancer in the Netherlands. Let's just skip it. Uh, this is my first slide, which you probably don't need to see, because I, I asked the question to the, the crowd, uh, have you ever seen QGIS? And if they don't, then I have a picture for them, so they know where they are, but I guess you have all, all seen this before. Uh, and this is a picture I found on the internet, which is uh, the, the oldest, biggest um, uh, screenshot I could find. find. And actually, um, QGIS was started in 2002 by a guy named Gary Sherman. And he put the code on the internet and he said, you can all use this. And um, then people started helping him and we just started growing. This is actually, uh, the screenshot is taken from uh, a bug someone found in the, in the projection. So that's why you see the, the double layers, different projections. Uh, I'm not sure this is gonna work on Giovanni's laptop. <laughs> Let's find out. No, well. I did this Gorse uh, movie on uh, the first month of uh, QGIS development. Um, I can show you later on my laptop. Uh, but you can see just uh, two people working on QGIS. And I'll do one later. And my story for the Dutch uh, people was uh, that you can plant a seed and you can grow a few plants on your own. And maybe if you work really hard, you can uh, have a large garden with, uh, with a lot of plants. But if you really want a, a garden like this, then you need a lot of people to help. So you will never manage this uh, on your own. And that's actually what happens in, in QGIS. Now this is where the, the Gorse uh, movie should go uh, with uh, uh, one month of uh, QGIS development during the Hackfest in Nerdeburg last year, where you can see that a lot of people are working together on, uh, on the QGIS project. Uh, right now we are on uh, QGIS 2.18 and almost uh, uh, releasing QGIS 3.0. And this is uh, uh, just to explain how the development goes. Um, it's actually over time it is uh, functionality is, is added to the to the application. And so what you do is you have new features all the time and you have bug fixes. And they're all put on, the, on, this, uh, on this line. And then every few months, I think it's four now, <coughs> uh, there is a release. And uh, QGIS releases are like 12 to 14 to 16. It's always an even uh, uh, number. Um, and that's when, well, let's say there's a new release for most of the users. They can download it and install it. 
and in between, and that's why there's the even numbers, in between is the, uh, the odd numbers, like 2, 13, 15, 17, and that are the development versions. And they are uh, not released, but you can always download those and uh, compile them yourself and use them. Or you can even download compiled versions and use them. Um, so this is the way it, uh, it works. And developers always um, work on the old numbers. And it's a bit hard to, to tell now because of the this uh, black uh, box. Or can you remove that? Okay. <laughs> yes, that's where 3.0 is. Uh, so the odd number before 3.0 is uh, 299, which is the version we are actually working on. So. And then what we have is the uh, LTR versions, which are long-term releases. And uh, they last longer in a way. And what we do is we, um, when there's a bug fix, it's copied to the long-term release versions, and then you get like 2.14.1, 2.14.2, 2.14.3. 2 so you get new uh, releases for, um, for those um, versions. Uh, but it's only done with the bug fixes, so new features will not end up in the long-term releases, just the bug fixes. We work together on, on GitHub, which is a kind of a website where we can uh, put all the code and discuss about the code. And, and in theory, we could put issues there as well, but it's <laughs> undecided yet. <laughs> we're not using it uh, uh, yet. And I think we're going to decide on how to do that in the future uh, these days as well. Uh, here you can see uh, how much code is um, the, the, in the graph on the right side, how much code is uh, being uh, put there. So that has been growing during uh, the last years uh, as well. Uh, in 2007, uh, the OSGO organization uh, incubated uh, QGIS, so it's an official OSGO project from 2007 and in 2007 we got the PSC which is the project steering committee uh, which is kind of the board of the of the QGIS project and at this moment I think still are these people uh, present um, Tim is, uh, is, is going to leave or already left I, I'm not sure about that we can explain maybe later <laughs> I'm leaving soon, but not left yet. <laughs> okay, thank you, Tim. <laughs> You're still there. Um, and in 2015, since 2015, there is a QGIS organization, which is a uh, hard to pronounce. Uh, Verein im Sinne des Schweizerischen Zivilgesetzbuches. <laughs> yeah, was it okay? <laughs> It's a Swiss, uh, Swiss-based uh, uh, foundation, uh, and, and so since 2015, there is a is an official organization uh, for QGIS. Uh, now, this is what the, the presentation is uh, it all about: is the, uh, how to contribute to uh, to the project. Uh, there are a few people are new and uh, in a hectic now. Um, and sometimes people think that uh, the only thing you can do is uh, help the QGIS project uh, if you know C++, which is the programming language used to, uh, to write uh, the um, QGIS desktop application. Um, but not many people uh, can do that, and some people are scared to, to uh, hop on the project uh, because of this because it, they think it's the only thing that needs to be done, but there's a lot more. For example, a lot of uh, code is written in Python as well, which is, uh, uh, I think, the easier language, and uh, so it might be easier to, to help in that part of the, of the code. 
but there's more. There's also the documentation. Every time there's new features or features change in QGIS, the documentation has to be uh, uh, expanded or uh, changed. And that's a lot of work. So uh, I think people interested have just uh, seen um, Alessandra's uh, presentation about how that's uh, been done. Um, and uh, the application, sorry, the application as well as the, um, as the documentation uh, and the website are, uh, are all translated to a lot of languages. Um, if your language is not there, you can apply for it. So we can uh, create a new uh, uh, language and then you can start translating. Um, but also if things change in the interface, then um, new uh, pieces of uh, text are, are added in English and uh, need to be translated to all the languages which is existing. So that's uh, a lot of work as well. It's being done uh, online, so you can uh, create an online account and then uh, you can be added to the group of the language you choose and then uh, start helping. And there's a filing bug, uh, that's what I asked to the, to the Dutch people. Um, if you use QGIS, it's free and some people think that if they need bugs that they shouldn't complain because it's free and, uh, and, and so why would you complain? about something that you got for free, but actually uh, I try to convince them that you'll help if you file the book, but do it in a proper way. So first find out if someone else has uh, filed it, and if you do it, uh, keep on watching it, so because probably you'll get some questions back, and um, you need to answer them as well. So follow your own filed book, and then you give the developers the opportunity to uh, improve QGIS. Uh, testing has a bit to do with uh, filing the bugs as well. You can always um, uh, download the code or a compiled version of the, the old version, the, the development version. I think they're called testing and someone it things all the time. You have master and testing and is it called testing now? Yeah. yeah. You can download and, um, and use it and you will find probably more bugs because it's uh, it's more the cutting edge version of QGIS with new functionality that can break maybe some parts of the older functionality. But uh, we need that to be tested as well. And there's a mailing list where you can um, subscribe to, then you get a lot of emails. So you need to uh, create a filter for it as well, I guess, in your email so they don't end up with all your important other emails. And you can read questions from other people. You can ask questions yourself. And you can uh, answer questions from others. And in that way, we all help each other to, uh, to learn how to use to this. And if you really don't have any time to spend on, uh, on, on, on the project itself, but you're really happy using this, you might uh, decide to do donation in money. And um, uh, I think if you download it, you're always asked uh, for, uh, for it, so it's very easy to find. Um, and you can also buy uh, a shirt or merchandise, and uh, then you, uh, you're happy yourself, because you have a super cool shirt, as I'm wearing right now. And you can, uh, uh, part of the money will go to the, to the project. And it's always spent in the right, uh, <laughs> nice way <laughs> during Hackfest in uh, lots of pizza, for example. And talking about Hackfest, uh, they are held uh, twice a year, uh, usually up to now, always somewhere in Europe. Um, these are the locations. And there we spend a few days um, in. in uh, working together, discussing stuff, and eating pizzas, as I showed. So it's a lot of work, but it's also a nice uh, event and nice to meet each other. So this is the summary, all the things you can, uh, you can do. So you can code, you can document, you can translate, you can test, file bugs, sharing knowledge on the mailing list, for example, or you donate some money. 
And that's it. So question is, what will you choose to do? Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? I guess Tim is listening. Tim, are you listening? Yes, I'm listening, but I couldn't hear what the person was saying. I haven't heard anything, so uh, I don't know if there's... Uh, can you hear me? I think uh, you can't hear me. I can hear you, Tim. Ah. But I haven't heard anyone else, so I think there are no questions. Ah, okay. I thought there was. A, I heard somebody asking a question in the background there. Uh, are there any questions from in the Zoom room? No. no. <laughs> Thank you for a lovely presentation. It's uh, really great <laughs> to see. Okay. Thank you. Uh, what you put together there. And uh, yeah, I would just in encourage everyone to take your advice and come and contribute some way. It's really uh, how the project grows and improves. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. See you.